Hello everyone, it's Stacy with Real Life Psychology and Life Coaching, and I wanted to extend last week's video on primal nurturing. The child in me has some things to tell you, so let's have a seat on the couch. Alrighty, so last week we actually talked about primal nurturing and some of the um, addictions it can cause, such as drinking, sexual addiction, um, you know, self mutilation, and everything. And if you want a list of those, please check back to last week's video. Um, but I wanted to extend and kind of give more clarification on primal nurturing. Primal nurturing is helping the child in you. It is healing the child in you. Um, a lot of people have traumatic issues that have never been healed. And in order to completely heal those and face those on in adult life, you have to kind of nurture your child. So in order to do that, you are constantly talking to your inner child. You're constantly doing things that the young you um, is dying to do. Uh, for example, let's just say um, when you were a child, you never had your own room. So as an adult, you adulted your room. You made your room the place obviously of what an adult would enjoy but the child in you never really got a chance to heal from that so what you can do are little things like talk to yourself when you go out and you buy things for your room maybe ask the inner child in you what they want in the room a cute pillow um, a nice picture maybe just put a coloring book by your bed at night so before you go to sleep you can color but it's all about nurturing the inner child in you um, there are certain traumas that people go through as a child that there's nothing the adult them can actually do. Say you were, you know, molested or, you know, some really big traumatic thing or, you know, your your parents may have passed away and there's no way to really fulfill that. As an adult, you have to let that child and you know that you are safe. So what happens is instead of trying to replace something, you are um, helping that child grow into an adult. You're telling that child in you, I got you, you are safe. I am an adult now, I can take care of you. Um, you're kind of reassuring the child in you that they can be a child and be safe. So when you do go out and do things like go-kart racing or you know sitting in the movies, you're able to relax and enjoy yourself. You're not looking for something missing. Sometimes when you are interacting as an adult, you feel something is missing. And that could be the child in you letting you know, I didn't get to experience this. Let me out, unleash me, which means allow them to enjoy that moment as well. Let the child in you get out and enjoy that moment. There are so many things that we face on as an adult, we forget that as a child, um, you're still constantly learning. You're still constantly growing. You know, a two-year-old is repeating what you say. They're repeating what you do. Um, when you start to experience that as an adult, as a parent, you realize that nurturing that child, giving them freedom, allowing them to make decisions is something that's going to help them improve as an adult. But if you didn't get a chance to do that, you weren't able to make decisions. You weren't able to fully grow and mature into an adolescence and then turn into an adult um, with healed stages in your life, you're going to constantly feel like something is missing. You're going to constantly feel like, you know, there's something there or you're going to have some issues. You're going to have some addictions. You're going to have some problems. You may drink a lot. You may smoke a lot. You may do things that cause the inner child in you to quiet because you're trying to focus as an adult. But in reality, you want that child in you to flourish and grow and learn and develop. And the only way they can do that is if you are guiding them, just like with a two-year-old. We are tasked with children to protect them, to guide them, to teach them and nourish them or else they will never be able to survive. That is the same thing we have to do with our inner child. We have to allow them to grow. We have to allow them to heal. And then we have to allow them to flourish. And in doing so, we as adults, turn out our, um, we as adults, I'm sorry, turn out healthy and humble and ready and eager to be in the adult world. Sometimes you see people and you say, oh, they, you know, something's wrong with them. You know, they, they're mentally not, you know, there. And 
a lot of times that is because they are not allowing the child and adolescence in them to heal. They're trying to block that. So primal nurturing and safety is providing a safe place, a safe haven for your child, the child in you, a letting them know that you have fully grown up, you're fully capable of taking care of them, and they are okay to unleash their ideas and their projects. Um, one thing that actually makes me feel really good, and a lot of people probably don't know this, is painting. I'm not good at it. I, you know, I'm not a professional. I'm not trying to do any business with it, but when I actually get a paintbrush and an easel and I can sit there and just paint, I feel free. I feel like I'm able to just be a kid. I'm able to be a child. And I feel like the child in me is letting me um, experience that, but is giving me the peace and the calmness that I need in order to think like an adult. So what I wanted to reiterate in this video is allowing yourself the steps to provide your child and your adolescence to grow. The child in you is going to be kicking and screaming and trying to figure things out and 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 not able to completely heal without the guidance of the adult you to direct them. So if you don't direct that child, you're always going to have those issues. You're always going to have those concerns. You're always going to have those fears and you're never going to be able to give 100 percent of yourself. So let's just say for me, I'm learning a lot of different things. I'm learning that. I don't like a lot of things I've been doing. And I think it's I've been doing them because the adult me is saying you're required to do this. This is what adults do. Adults go out and have dinner with other adults. Adults go and, you know, and do this. They they go and do that. But something in me is like, yeah, that's cool, but I don't want to do that. So I'm starting to listen to the child in me say, hey, we did that last time and it's just not what we want to do. So I had to start rethinking about certain things. And that's what you have to do as an adult. You reevaluate your life situation so that you can make the best decisions possible. So with that, I just wanted to say that when it comes down to nurturing yourself and healing yourself, it's not about just going and getting a haircut or your nails done or your toes done. It's about healing the inside of you as well. And you wanna make sure that that child in you is heard. So even if you're going out to the store, like I said in the last video, if you were a child and you never got sweets, hey, buying yourself something sweet at the store could be a process that you don't even think about that is healing that child. It's giving them, hey, I'm experiencing this, I like it. When I, you know, adult, you know, I might want a Snickers, you know, here and there while I'm watching a movie or just laying on the couch just because. And it's OK. You're healing that child. You know, like I said, if there's more um, traumatic things where you don't have parents and and, you know, something may have happened, you have to start talking to that inner child. You have to start telling the inner child, it is OK. I am here. I'm going to help you. I'm going to heal you. What is it that this situation has caused that is not allowing you to fully continue to grow. And when you do that, you start finding out things about yourself that you didn't even know. Like I said before, you start learning things like, you know, some people really don't even, you, you ask them a question like, what's your favorite color? And they might just blurt out a color because it's what they've always said. But in genuality, that might not even be their favorite color. You know, it, in a lot of times, favorite colors are things that people like because it gives them a certain feeling. Like I like red because it's vibrant, it's bright, it's you can't miss it. You know, it's it's there. And and I'm not that type of person. I am not a very loud, outlandish um, person. I'm not quiet and private and shy, but I'm kind of in the middle. I'm not when I go out with friends who are like really. I I, I notice that I find friends that are more. Um, outgoing than I am and I think it's because I'm not so I can sit back and enjoy their company because they're they're very outgoing they talk to people they do things I don't do that so I feel like red is a representative of you know maybe the child in me I the child in me is very outgoing is very let's have fun let's do this let's do that but the adult me is very reserved and into business and you know I don't get a chance to just break free and ah so I feel like when we pick things that we like we're picking them for certain reasons and if you don't really know what you like then you're doing things through life that are just 
redundant and a waste of your time because you're not fully doing things that you enjoy. You're doing things just because you're adulting. Listen to the child in you and start flourishing and start growing and start adding more abundance to your life. One of the things that I noticed is the inner child of me likes to travel. I, you know, traveled here and there as a child. You know, my mom always went back and forth from California to Arizona. We lived in Michigan for a while. Um, and, you know, my daughter even up and moved to Atlanta, so we started visiting there. But I really started noticing that traveling was a very important thing to me. I wanted to experience different cultures. I wanted to experience different things. And the child of me is so happy when I do that. Now, most people may feel like that's an adult thing. But for me, my inner child didn't go to Disneyland and different things like that. I may have went to a few places, but I love going to amusement parks. I love going to Disneyland. I love going to Magic Mountain. I've been to Universal Studios. Um, you know, I, I take, I've taken my kids there. I love to travel and do fun things. The adult me is busy. The child me is enjoying the travel and the fun. So you have to really connect with your inner child to balance out your life. You want to be able to balance it out to where you're not just adulting and dying. You want to live. You want to be able to flourish. You want to be able to enjoy the time you have here. Because obviously we have no idea when we're going to go. So waiting to do it is nonsense because you have no idea how long you're going to have to connect with that inner child in you. So start connecting, start living, start flourishing. And in order to do that, one, you have to talk to your inner child. Two, you have to listen to your inner child. And three, you have to explore with your inner child. You know, if you've never sat at the park on a blanket and just thought about what you would do there as a child, do it. You know, now I'm taking picnics. I'm riding my bike more. I'm, you know, skating. I'm doing things that I feel are enjoyment. And it's not because I'm doing it because I want to feel like a child. I'm doing it because I am entertaining my inner child, which is allowing the adult me to flourish as well. So think about what I said, likes, comments, share, um, and you know, tell me what you think about today's topic. And uh, as always, do what is best for you. You have to live your best life. Have a great day.